All right, Sebastian Gorka is a military and intelligence analyst. He's a Fox News strategist and former deputy assess assistant to President Trump. He's also the author of the new book, Why We Fight, which will be out October 9th on Amazon. And we will have him back then to talk about that. But let's talk to him now. Are you there, Sebastian? I am, Drew. I am. <laughs> it's good to hear. It was really nice to meet you face to face in Washington. Uh, and I appreciated was, your introducing me to great. Don Jr. Yeah. How do you like uh, Trump international? If you're a conservative in the swamp, that's the place to be. It was great. It was. It really was like the smuggler's bar from the first uh, Star Trek <laughs> thing. Every every breed of conservative was in the place, and the ho hotel lobby, the lobby bar, is spectacular. I don't know what the rooms are like, but the place is beautiful. Right. No, the rooms are superb as well. Listen, before we get into serious issues, All okay. Right. I just need to talk about the the monologue you did on Ben and Ocasio Cortez, <laughs> and you used the phrase the kosher Casanova. I I, I want to see that cartoon. I want to see the kosher Casanova cartoon. Okay, you can, you can you can clear that with Ben, right? I did. I did. I have to say, I gave myself the rest of the day off after that. I, <laughs> even I was impressed. I appreciate your noticing. Uh, so we've, we we got a lot to talk about here. I mean, yeah. this this struck firing really does start to confirm the president in his feeling that he is genuinely uh, the the victim of a conspiracy. I, I mean, I, I know you're a big defender of his, but I think you got a point here. Yeah, they. Uh, I tweeted out early today. It wasn't my tweet; it was somebody else's. But it was simply a list of all the people who have been fired for cause at the FBI, the DOJ, or sent into early retirement. And it's stunning that, that I, in the history of the Bureau, I can't think of a period, not under, uh, uh, under um, Hoover or anybody else, where in the space of less than a year, you've had a dozen or more people um, got rid of the cause. So it's, it really does vindicate what the president has been saying. And, and the latest one, the decision by the deputy director, uh, Bowditch. I know Bowditch. He's a good guy. We were in San, we were in uh, L.A. together the day of the uh, San Bernardino massacre, <laughs> and when 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 we find out that he went back to the original I.G. Uh, findings, and he said this guy has got to go for multiple reasons, and this is the person who was you know, running the collusion investigation. This is the person who was running the Hil Hillary investigation. How did we get to this point where this was the man in charge of both of those incredibly important issues? And, and if, if this were an organization, if these were people who'd been appointed by Trump or even George W. Bush, oh my th gosh. this would be a huge scandal. I mean, t this is a, an organization, I respect the agents of the FBI, but this this is an organization that is now racked by scandal. That's what an organization looks like when a scandal hits it. Everybody gets fired, and that's what's happened. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, this, this, this uh, hits very close to me because before I, I went back into government, uh, I was traveling. I was doing 20,000 miles a month going from FBI field office to FBI field office because with my wife, we had a company that was providing uh, counterterrorism counter training on al-Qaeda and ISIS to, to federal agencies around the country. And wherever I went, they'd give me a pin of the local office. The next time I traveled, I'd wear it with pride. Drew, I don't wear FBI pins anymore mm -hmm. since the last two years because a bunch, just a handful of people at the very, very top have destroyed the reputation of one of the world's, if not the world's most famous law enforcement agency. It, it is. It's pitiful. I, you, you know, explain something to me. I, I, I just, this is something I literally don't understand. I don't want you to, you know, I'm, I'm not asking you to go off on Jeff Sessions at all, but mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. The president is obviously incredibly angry about this. We heard yeah. Devin Nunes just before you came on saying if he won't unrecuse himself, what is the theory of why, why he recused himself that doesn't have to do with ethics? I mean, it seemed to me he just did it on an ethical basis, but obviously Trump feels that's not so. Yeah. Uh, I, I, look, I, 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 I told the president I wasn't going to criticize any serving member of the cabinet when I, I resigned from uh, the White House. I, I, you know, if they leave, that's fine. I, I'll spend hours talking to you about the disaster that was Rex Tillerson. But, you know, Sessions is, is still in there as AG. From my personal experience, all, all that I will say is uh, I think this man, he didn't really understand the Sisyphean nature of what he was getting involved in. Um, and he thought this would be just like being a, you know, an AG for a state. 
and it's not, not after eight years of Obama. And, and then when you go into a new organization, you need people around you who you trust. And the idea that he just inherits this guy, Rod Rosenstein, who actually appointed Mueller as the special prosecutor after he failed in the interview to get back his job as director of the FBI, I think that was the biggest mistake. He, he went in there um, without the requisite understanding of the depth of the corruption. Uh, and beyond that, he, he uh, entrusted... Uh, you know, he, he trusted people around him who were not deserving of that trust. Uh, fair enough. I, I mean, I have to say that cons Republicans appoint these special counsels at the drop of the hat. I don't know what it would take before a Democrat would do. I mean, it had to be Clinton with Monica Lewinsky before they would appoint a special counsel. Obama could have uh, done it four times. On, on that point, I think it's an awful institution. I don't care yeah. if the president is a Democrat or a Republican. This is like a... a a missile with no guidance system and and it's just it's it's out they, they have too much money too much power they always end up investigating things that have nothing to do with the original political uh, mandate they are provided so i'm not i'm not a fan of the special prosecutor whoever is the president you know bill mcgurn who i is a, a pal of mine and i i think has been really fair to trump a uh, very balanced he has a column in the wall street journal today just begging trump to declassify the documents that Devin Nunes wants and that the DOJ and the FBI are holding back. Do you think, do you think the president would ever do that? Uh, if a certain member of his legal team wasn't me a member of the legal team. <laughs> okay. So. And, and it's, not, it's not one of the people that he recently employed. Okay, okay. So he's getting advice that not to do this because, because it would just cause too much political damage? No, because th there's a certain person in, in the ca office of the, uh, the, the White House counsel who's, who's afraid. Yeah. Who, who's just afraid and who doesn't understand that this, this is no longer, uh, th this is about uh, politics and Robert Mueller has turned something that should have been a judicial function into a political one. And this individual that I'm talking about is not a politician, doesn't understand Washington, D.C. And if you are a lawyer in D.C., you have to be a political animal as mm -hmm. much as a lawyer. And this person isn't. Wow. OK. So let's talk about Amorosa. Did you you knew Amorosa? I've seen pictures of you with her, right? You knew her. Yeah, I unfortunately bumped into her regularly <laughs> in the White House. <laughs> so she has really gone off. I mean, this is this is the real deal. They think that once once again, the press has got the president in their clutches. Uh, what <laughs> what do you, what do you make right. of this? I mean, it's, it's kind of shocking. It's a little bit shocking that she's taping stuff in the Situation Room. It's not shocking. It's a crime. It's I a mean, crime, it's, yeah. Uh, as you, the, the Situation Room is actually three different rooms underneath the West Wing next to the Navy Mess. And when you walk in, there are people at the desk who run it, who are responsible for its security. And there's a whole long row of uh, lockable cabinets where you are supposed to put your phone, your laptop, any electronic device must be locked in there before you go into the, the most, these are called SCIF, Secure Compartmented Information Facilities. The, these are, this is the most important SCIF in the U.S. government outside of Air Force One. Mm -hmm. This is where the president goes when he's planning a military intervention. So the idea that this woman knowingly, there's no way you do this accidentally, walked into the most important skiff in America with a surreptitious recording device and did this, I tweeted it out yesterday, she should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, Drew. So that, I noticed that they're going to sue her for violating a uh, non-disclosure yeah, yeah, agreement. Right. Yeah, but but that's not the same thing as no. uh, yeah, prosecuting her, yeah. You don't think that's going to no, happen? No, no, no. That's, that's a civil matter. Uh, she has <laughs> been incredibly unwise. I signed an NDA when I came aboard to advise candidate Trump back, back in 2015. I signed one with the, the Trump organization. I'm sure she signed a very similar one. Uh, she has clearly written a book that is defamatory, and that goes against her uh, agreement. She is in civil jeopardy with regards to that, and she is in uh, federal criminal jeopardy with, with her abuse of the classified uh, infrastructure regulations that are in the White House. Look, on the one hand, Drew, you, you have to... You have to be, try and be Christian about it. This woman needs some kind of professional help. I mean, the way the state, no, seriously, the statements she's making 
are beyond the pale. What she's saying about the president, the language she uses, the fact that just two years ago she was saying exactly the opposite, unless she is a totally amoral manipulator and just a snake, this is a person who may have some mental issues as well that she needs to get treated. I, I have to ask you this. Uh, she's claimed she's got a tape of Trump uh, using the N word, which I think would be enormously depressing yeah. as well as damaging. Do you if, believe if, it? If she had, if she had, the audio would already be out there. She doesn't. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a lie. Okay, it's a lie. I mean, she she left what? She left where, when? Uh, eight months ago. The, the idea that she'd be sitting on it for eight months, garbage. Okay. Uh, now, since I've got you here, I've got to ask you some political yeah. questions. Uh, th this the race in Ohio uh, in the special. Um, the special election with Balderson, where he just barely pulled it out in this highly right. Republican district. I, I understand that I, even a near win is a win. I get all that. But it does seem right. that the numbers show uh, some some damage to Republican candidates, at least so far in the these uh, in the run up to the midterms. Is, is Trump bringing them down? Is that is what happening that he's alienating people with the, the all the kind of, uh, you know, obstreperous behavior? Not not the people who, no, I mean, if you look at the polling data from Pew, the people who voted for Donald Trump two years ago are still massively fond of him and support him. Uh, there was a superb piece, I think it was today or yesterday, that Selena Zito wrote in um, New York Post, where she, she just crunches the math. Special elections never reflect the state of a nation just before a midterm. If you go back to uh, 2006, the, the Democrats lost every single special election that year. When it came to the midterm, they flipped the House by 30 seats. Uh, four years later, you saw the same thing with, with the, with the uh, GOP. The Republicans lost every single special election and then took the House back. So the idea that, that a very sui generis district or state actually tells you what's going on in the nation, it doesn't really hold true. It's, it's easy for, you know, the left to draw certain conclusions, but a special election is called special for a reason. You know, when we were in, uh, the, in the, at the Trump International, there was a fellow there who you were sort of describing as a, a major observer of politics and kind of a fixer. <laughs> a fixer. And, I, <laughs> and, I, I, and I asked him what he thought, and he said, oh, we're gonna, well, we won't lose the Senate, but we are going to lose the House. Do you agree with him? No, I don't. Andy's a good friend of mine. We work together in the White House, but he is a genetic pessimist, so, so no. <laughs> and, and, and he's being cautious. He's being cautious. But no, I, I think uh, it, you just, just forget po politics and, and remove from the equation who you voted for. I don't care who you are. And, and just be completely cold and clinical about the last year and a half. Who, who, who's actually produced something that is positive in the last year and a half? Is it the Democrats? I mean, what, what, what are you voting for? You know, Miss Googly Eyes? <laughs> when, 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 when you're voting for the Democrats? It just, there's, there's no there there. I mean, there's hatred. Yeah, okay, which is great with their base. But all the millions of people who have profited literally, you know, financially in the last year and a half by getting jobs or spiritually by getting off welfare or getting off opioids or what have you, those people are not going to vote for Nanny Pelosi. Well, I mean, well, they sh I, you know, it really, it really, if Trump were not Trump, the death of ISIS, the appointments he's made on the courts, the uh, economy, uh, yes. the guy would be on the $10 bill. I mean, he, if, it were, if he weren't Trump. And, and, I mean, and imagine, imagine, imagine if somebody had done what Omarosa did to the Obama White House. Oh, yeah, she'd have been taken apart. I mean, just imagine the yeah. frenzy. Yeah. yeah. The frenzy. She would be excommunicated from polite society for the rest of her life by the Washington press corps. All right. Last question. Uh, we've got yeah. so we've got September, October before the elections. What do you expect to see coming out of the White House in terms of policy? I you're going to talk about my book. I, I, well, I want you to come back and talk about your book. When it, but there's no point in talking about it now. People will forget by October. It's already available. It's already it is. for pre-order. Oh, pre for pre-order. All right. Yeah. Well, why we fight? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Well, yeah. what, so what, so about what, November? What, what are you expecting to see come out of the White House in terms of policy between now and then? I, I think what we're going to see is that the most important thing, the thing that will get most oxygen, uh, is going to be the ramifications of the um, 
the deal the president signed yesterday for increased defense expenditure, what that means for uh, our capacity to be more forceful and robust around the world. And beyond that, it's getting serious about resetting our trade relations with everybody. And this isn't about trade wars because the other people started it first. When you have Canada leveraging you know, 280% uh, tariffs on our, on our milk, who started the trade war? It wasn't us. So I think that the biggest things are the continuation of the resetting of our global economic relations, and specifically within that, how we deal with a resurgent China that really is the only threat we face. I mean, we're dealing with ISIS, we'll deal with Iran, we'll deal with Russia, with North Korea. The only long-term threat we face as a nation is, is a China that wishes to displace us as the force for good in the world. So I think you know, you'll know you see a lot more interesting actions being taken by the president with regard to uh, China and international trade. All right, Sebastian Gorka, Why We Fight is out on uh, October 9th, but you can pre-order it on Amazon. Why We Fight by Sebastian Gorka. Thanks very much for coming on. Let's talk again. Thanks, Rick. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.